Did you know that Harding invented the first rectangular connector way back in 1965? Since then, we have come a very long way in the strength, capability, and application areas for these kinds of connectors. And you know what? There are even more cool things on the horizon for these compact and robust universal connectors. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. There is a big push in the electronics industry today to make our design smaller and more modular. One way we can help solve these design challenges is with the choice of connector we select for our designs. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Goda Inoketita from Harding and I examine the role that miniaturized connectivity plays in the future of electronic design. We also look at how Harding's Han 1A connectors can help reduce errors in installation, improve serviceability, and increase modularity in your next design. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Harding. Hi, Goda. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, glad to be here. Okay, so Goda, before we get started, what all will we be covering today? Yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about the industry trends that we're seeing because that's really showing why we've developed this product and really where the trends are moving in the future and how this connector series fits in there. We're going to talk about, of course, the connector series itself, the portfolio, the breadth of it. And then we're going to talk about our online configurator tool that really helps put it with putting together the solutions in a really easy way. And lastly, we'll talk a little bit about the markets and applications where this connector series fits into. Excellent. So we will be talking about the Han 1A connectors today, but go to, before we dig into the details, what kind of advantages do you see connectors bringing to the table overall? Sure. Well, you know, there's quite a few advantages, right? At the end of the day, what we're really looking at is how can we provide cost savings and user satisfaction to the end users of a product? And one of the ways that connectors provide advantages is with a reduction in error during installation. A lot of industrial equipment is quite large. It's made up of different subsystems and at the end of the day, it needs to be assembled on site. So having a connectorized system is a really plug and play way to reduce errors in that initial installation and quick installation on site. But similar to that, it also improves serviceability. So a lot of this equipment needs certain subsystems to be replaced within a certain amount of time. You can think of motors, different light fixtures, and having those subsystems connectorized also reduces the downtime and enables you to quickly get your machine up and running. And lastly, modular system design is key for nimble and flexible assembly. So this is more so on the OEM side as well. You're able to create platforms of machinery that has a core system and then a really modular design to add on different features in a quick way, especially nowadays when the design cycles are so quick. So go to what kind of industry trends are you seeing in this arena? Yeah, so in regards to general industry trends, we have seen time and time again that there is a desire to reduce system sizes or add more functionalities or even both. In addition to that, there's a trend to, of course, reduce failure on site with some easier ways to connectorize the systems to get it up and running and sort of tying into that also reducing the complexity of the system. Whoever is the end user, they want something that's easy to use, that really anyone they hire would quickly be able to function or set it up. So those are really some of the key trends we're seeing. And in terms of connectivity, what's reflected there is miniaturized connectivity. Beyond that, reducing failure provides the market with better products. And in general, reducing complexity ensures ease of use for whoever is operating the machinery. 
With this information, we see that miniaturized connectivity is the key to meeting industry trends. And this is where the Han 1A series was born. Fantastic. Well, let's talk about the Han 1A. What kind of benefits does this connector bring to the table? Yeah, so to address those industry trends, right, we developed this Han 1A connector system. It's a really compact but versatile connector system. Harding is known for being the inventor of the rectangular connector. So with the 1A portfolio, we really built it upon that well-known legacy of high quality and robustness. But beyond that, not only is it a compact solution and it's lightweight, but it's also modular. So it really ensures flexibility on site and in the manufacturing process, while also offering different interfaces like power, signal, and data. Excellent. Now, what kind of insert options do I have with the Han 1A? So at this point, there are eight different types of interfaces we offer between power, signal, and data. Generally, when selecting a connector, you're really focused at the core of the interface first, right? What electrical characteristics are you looking for? What kind of wire sizes do you have on your cable? And that really is determined by the inserts that we offer. So for instance, on the higher power side of things, we have a three plus PE insert that's up to 16 amps per pin and 600 volts. We also have a 12-pin high-density insert, typically used more for signal applications. And we see tons of trends with incorporating industrial Ethernet now in equipment. So we have four as well as eight-wire Ethernet options for these inserts. And something else that's really important to point out is that there's also different termination styles within these. A lot of these smaller connectivity solutions are typically only available in a crimp termination. This crimp termination is very reliable, it's really efficient, but it does require a crimp tool. And sometimes in the field, you really just need to assemble something with a standard screwdriver. And so we also offer the three plus PE as well as the two plus PE insert in a screw termination. So what kind of locking options does the Han 1A include? Yeah, so there are two different locking mechanisms within the Han 1A portfolio series. In general, one of the great advantages to rectangular connectors is the easy mating. When you look at a small circular connector, there are 360 degrees of mating options that can, well, make it challenging to connect. Additionally, with threaded connectors, to ensure a secure connection, you generally need some special torque tooling as well. So the Han 1A rectangular interface is offered with two locking options, both of which provide a quick and toolless mating. One option is an integrated snap latch. Alternatively, there's also a lever locking option that is more traditional to the Han connector portfolio. Okay, so earlier you mentioned that the Han 1A has a modular design. Can we talk about that a bit more? Yeah, so the Han 1A connector series is built upon a snap-on system that ensures fast and hassle-free assembly. As we mentioned, you typically select your inserts first based on the cabling you have or the electrical requirements in that system. So after selecting these inserts that meet those electrical requirements, the snap-on accessories are then selected based on the environmental needs. So you can have a panel mount, you can have some strain reliefs. And then the process is very simple. You slide it onto your insert and it snaps into place. At first glance, this may not seem too significant, especially if you're only assembling one connector. However, when we look at volume production and extrapolate, let's say a 10 or 15 second assembly time versus a one second snap on assembly time, there can be significant labor cost savings. That makes sense. Now, what about mounting? What kind of options do I have here? If mounting to a panel where the wires need to feed through some sort of enclosure, you would be looking at what we call a bulk head mounted housing. As mentioned previously, these are snap-on and are really quick to install. There are straight, 
panel mount housings. So they come out vertically, perpendicular to the panel. But we also have angle panel mounted versions. And these are really nice when you're looking at an application that requires some low clearance and doesn't want anything to protrude out of the panel itself. So go to, does the Han 1A have different options on the plug side as well? Yeah, certainly. On the plug side, there are a couple of options as well due to the scalable ingress protection. This interface can be used with a single jacketed cable to meet IP65 sealing. But an IP65 rating could also be met if you're using discrete wire. We have single wire seals that seal each wire individually. And then you would simply use a strain relief to hold those wires in place. Or alternatively, if no ingress protection is needed, wires or cables can be simply tied to a strain relief without any sealing mechanism. Okay, cool. Now, if I'm looking at an inline application, what kind of mounting options do I have with the Han 1A? Looking at inline applications in which you do not need to feed through a panel, there are a couple options there as well. Sometimes connections like these are left to be free hanging, but with the 1A, we do offer some product tailored mounting frames that really enable ease in installation and allow for you to have all of your inline connections well organized. So there are mounting frames that are wall mount that are available, as well as DIN rail mount if using a traditional DIN rail. So speaking of organization as well, we know that one of the main benefits of connectorization is the ease in maintenance and serviceability. However, in a complex system with lots of wiring, it is critical to be able to easily identify one wire or one connector from another. This is why the 1A series offers color coding tabs in five different variations to help with this organization and identification. These color coding clips come in combs of 10 pieces and they really quickly, in true Han 1A fashion, snap onto the inserts very quickly and easily. Okay, so what about robustness? How does the Han 1A deal with harsh environmental factors? Yeah, as you've seen, this is a plastic connector portfolio, and this enables it to be quite a lightweight solution. This is, of course, important as we look into mobile and dynamic applications, which aim to reduce energy consumption. This plastic material also has an innate resistance to chemicals and other aggressive influence that some metal materials generally just do not have. And while it's a lightweight plastic solution, it is still very robust in the typical Harding fashion as it has been tested to railway standards such as Category 1B. Okay, so Goda, can we talk about the configuration aspect of this solution? How would I go about learning more about my configuration options with the Han 1A? Sure, while modular interconnect systems enable immense flexibility, it also means that there's some upfront work in configuration, right? There's a lot of pieces at work here. For that reason, we have an easy to use online configurator that helps put together a bill of materials. This configurator in real time shows the 3D model of the solution without the need for any 3D software, right? You select your parts and you can move this 3D model around real time. Now, once the configuration looks good, you can click through and download all the documentation, including the bills of materials, 2D drawings, as well as the 3D models. So what's also really neat is that our Harding configurator is embedded in the Mauser website. So this means as you're clicking through, as you're creating your configuration, at the end of the configuration, you click through and it re-navigates you to the checkout cart on the Mauser website, and you're all set to go with ordering. That's cool. Now, go to what kind of applications do you think the Han 1A is a good fit for? We mentioned earlier that this is quite the universal connector, so there are quite a few different applications, but first and foremost, machinery and robotics offer a lot of complex systems made up of various subsystems. So. You know, we mentioned all of these subsystems and peripherals like heaters and fans, they can all be connectorized and 
in many ways they should, to create the ease in installation as well as the serviceability aspect. And this really goes towards the trend in modular machine design that reduces, again, any of that downtime and any significant maintenance costs for having someone on site for long periods of time. Now, in transportation, there's a similar topic with the need for modularized subsystems. There are door system controls, illumination, speakers, push buttons, you name it. And it is critical to be able to replace those systems quickly and efficiently, particularly when there is tough accessibility into wiring areas of the train. You really want to be able to disconnect something very easily, to not need to bring in any sort of tooling to unwire those connections. We also like to talk about energy with both the generation side as well as the energy storage side. As we develop more and more energy generation systems, such as wind turbines, solar panels, there will also be a need to have easily replaceable subsystems to reduce downtime on that end as well. On the storage side, there are controls for cooling, there are sensors and remote accessibility controls that can be modularized as well. But there are certainly more application areas than we discussed here because the Han 1A series really is a universal general use solution. All right, Goda. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yes, thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Harding. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.